next two speakers, please. David Sleeper, 403, saw blade circle, representing self, followed by Jennifer Knight. Young man, you're living the dream, aren't you? Well, this nightmares are a type of dream, right? <laughs> Uh, uh, David Schlieper, 403, Saw Blade Circle. I'm going to start with some things that I actually support in this plan. And For instance, it could provide a significant number of jobs for Chesapeake, and that would be huge, especially for those of us that have to drive out of town to find jobs we enjoy. Also, the location of the site within the Williams Track, it separates the possible industrial areas from the residents, and I'm sure the residents appreciate that. And finally, the proposal makes a land use compromise that still retains a significant portion of the farmland, or a significant portion of the land as farmland. But I do have some concerns. And, and it starts with the already prominent development several miles north in the Grassfield High School area. Proposing or planning any significant development on Mr. Williams' property would increase the pressure of industrial and residential development in between the two locations within a rural overlay district. I'd like to point out that within Section 26 of the City Code, it's plainly stated that new developments contribute less money in taxes than the cost of providing these areas with public services such as roads, utilities, and even schools. Rather than approving a plan that would further financial strain on the city, let's focus on economic development and growth in areas already undergoing major economic or major development prior to boasting about a new space several miles away. This leads to my next point is that any industrial development in the rural overlay district would entirely contradict at least six of the nine purposes of the city established OSAP program, the, the Open Space and Agricultural Pr Preservation Program. Uh, for example, a few of these purposes are to improve the quality of life in it for the inhabitants of the city, emphasizing redevelopment of older or underutilized areas, and maybe most importantly, reduce and defer the need for major urban infrastructure in the underdeveloped portions of the city and the expenditure of public funds for these improvements. I realize that participation in those that programs is voluntary, but that in no way diminishes the values and purposes of the program. In addition to contradicting these purposes, any industrial development would also nullify farm preservation er efforts in, by the state and national codes, which clearly state that farms are in fact a limited natural resource. My final concern is that if this tract were to be planned and advertised as anything other than agricultural, it sets a precedent for other, that, that other farmers would notice. When agriculturally zoned land is sold as industrial, the extra monetary value in the industrial land creates an incentive for farmers to sell, and the, in that they would seek equal rezoning treatment as Mr. Williams. This incentive would create an environment that would accelerate the rate of farm loss in Chesapeake and it would entirely counteract state and local efforts to preserve these farms. So wrapping up, the short-term impacts have <laughs> the short-term impact, impacts of having industrial sites of the proposed location are certainly annoying to the locals, but maybe not necessarily devastating in the short term. The long-term effects, however, absolutely serve to the detriment of farm preservation efforts as well as public funds. Of course, it is well within the powers of City Council to reject any future rezoning proposals in the rural overlay district, but I'd like to point out that it states in City Code that farmland preservation should be accomplished through voluntary rather than regulatory means. Approving this plan creates an environment that would certainly incentivize rezoning farmland and counteract efforts by the state and city to diminish regulatory input. Alternatively, rejection of this proposal still leaves many options on the table and has its benefits. For instance, no precedent would be set on the sale of agricultural land as industrial. Also, the rejection tonight would preserve the ability for City Council to approve conditional use permits for ind individual too good to refuse proposals. So wrapping up, approving this plan provides no significant benefit to Chesapeake or its citizens while creating an atmosphere that would promote the dissolution of farmland. Rejection of the proposal, however, still provides options, options that are beneficial to farm preservation, residents, and Chesapeake's future economy. Thanks. Thank you, sir.